Hi and welcome to Conversation Oasis. This is a weekly program of free flow conversation which comes to you from the Kas Viskedas restaurant here in the center of Turku. I'm your host David Morby. Today we've got a cozy team of very strong voices. Um, yes, excluding myself, because we have our host, uh, uh, Yalem. Uh, maybe you could introduce yourself again. Uh, we, we haven't heard much. You haven't explained to listeners for some months now who um, you are. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm uh, Jalal uh, Saryan, um, originally from Iran, living in uh, Finland for 23 years. I came uh, January 95 to Finland. Um, unfortunately, I've been very lazy to learn Finnish language, but uh, being busy all the time uh, with a different uh, kind of business and what I have learned about uh, from uh, Finnish language has been just by working with Finnish. Okay, which brings us uh, on to our, our next guest. Uh, please introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm uh, Rasmus Hofström. Uh, I'm from Finland. And um, I, I'm, uh, I've lived in Finland for 28 years, and that's how old I am also. And, yeah. and you were born, uh, I believe, on uh, one of the many islands. Uh, uh -huh. yeah, so you are really are an islander. Is there, is there a special word for an islander, Saaristolainen or something like that? What would you, how would you describe yourself? Yeah, in Swedish there's a word that describes it quite well. It's called Sharibu, but it's basically an islander. Okay, yeah. so we have uh, Rasmus, 28 years. We have Yalai, who's been here 23 years. Yours truly, who's been here 43 years. 43, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I, think we know, I think we know something about what we're talking about. How do you feel 43 years? Um, here, uh, better for you or back? I oh, I cannot make that kind of comparison because the, the world has changed so much. Uh, the country I left, which was the United Kingdom, has dramatically changed, it has politically changed, the, cultural ha the culture has changed, the language has changed, I have changed. So there, I think there's quite a bit of incompatibility. When I go back to the United Kingdom, I look, of course, for the the country, I love the countryside there. I think the British countryside is especially beautiful. But uh, when it comes to the rest of it, you run straight into problems. The, the, the sheer density of people in so many places, the, the traffic density, and the fact that the pace of society there has increased dramatically in the four decades since uh, I left there. But still some very, very nice people, even some of those who voted to, unfortunately, leave the European Union. Isn't it this related to the question you had uh, from Rasmus, that he's Islander? Yeah. And what is the difference between living in Ireland and in a city? In, in Ireland there is less competition, there are uh, more, um, there, there are less needs to lie and uh, more easy life and uh, growing more healthy m in terms of mentality. And um, if you compare Finland again to England, so money is much more important there and there are oh, more yes. competition and where people are competing all the time. With you. So life here is more healthy, more smooth and m uh, more probably... Uh, oh, well, the pace of life, as, you, as you're indicating, is, 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 is still slower. But it's it's getting quicker here all the time because one is being forced by uh, economic pressures to be more competitive, to be more efficient. These are words we have heard over the past 20 years as if they were some kind of uh, religious mantra. It used to be what? Um, home, country and religion. Now it is uh, uh, efficiency. It's uh, efficiency. Uh, uh, being being competitive uh, and, and 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 damn humanity almost. But uh, still, I think these are uh, possible to achieve uh, with Finnish mentality compared to like British uh, mentality. Uh, but if if uh, in your country somebody says that uh, you ask somebody that what are you doing, it's very sh a shame to say that I'm jobless. 
So you, they oh, yes. have to come up with some lie that to make them look busy or yeah. important. But here, um, uh, there is no need because uh, people um, in mentality doesn't judge them by, by work or importance of money and things like that. I would say the mentality is changing a bit it's ch with but, the but current still, politics. Yeah, you yeah. have uh, quite a lot of this... Uh, uh, the discourse is uh, trying to sort of say that the jobless person is jobless because they're lazy and not working enough and... and uh Correct. I, I, I go along with you there, Rasmus. And also, what I've, the, the, the one insidious thing I've, I've seen in the last few months here is a kind of demonization of the unemployed, as, as if it was their own fault that they were not competitive enough to be in one of these top high-flying capitalist uh, firms that will be here today and gone tomorrow. And, and I think that um, you don't have to look far to actually identify those people who are propagating this filth, uh, this demonization of people who are unemployed. And there are, there are several types of unemployed people. There are those who, for uh, health reasons, mental, physical, or otherwise, they cannot be employed. And uh, these are the easiest ones to demonize because they cannot fight back. Uh, I refer to specifically to the, to the mentally, Ill, mentally ill in society. And then there are those who just cannot take the pace of this neocon, uh, new liberalistic uh, e economic sphere we find ourselves in, which demands everyone to be so damn bloody efficient, so damn uh, effective. Um, Whereas you're not allowed to go at your own natural rhythm. Why? Because we have to be competitive. Why do we have to be competitive? Well, you know it's cheaper to make things in China, isn't it? Ah, but how many Finnish mm -hmm. firms have sold their businesses to China? Need I go on? Perhaps in the minds of some, no. Okay, that was a yeah. good no, but, 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 the, but, the, <clears throat> but the question is that how competitive, why do we need to be competitive? And if we are competitive, what is the point in it? How much we need manufacturing and producing? How much we really need? Do we really need this much that now we are getting... Yeah, I feel like it's been normalized up to the point that uh, you can just say that uh, in itself you need to be efficient because that's where a lot. It, that's uh, it's a value in itself somehow, yeah. which didn't exist before. I think I'm still quite young, but what, from what I've heard, it's uh, you weren't a worthless person <coughs> in, unless you were able to produce something, and yeah. and you can feel it like we're not citizens in a way as much as we're consumers. But uh, do you know what is happening, Rasmus? Um, that's the fake value we have that um, more uh, working hours m uh, gives you credit because um, uh, you work longer hour has a price somebody is jobless mm -hmm. so we should share this working yeah. hours and that everybody yeah. feel like uh, yeah, and positive and the differences yeah, yeah, yeah. for example in Sweden they started experimenting with a six hour work today yeah and then uh, in comparison in Finland they gave everyone uh, what is it seven minutes longer to work seven every minutes day. longer yeah. to work yeah. and increased the the retirement age to 67 although I noticed with great interest that uh, those that were were spinning that a particular bit of propaganda were the very people who were uh, taking early retirement from their own businesses uh, a message there to the, the Confederation of Finnish Industry, yet again, who happen to be the cruelest bunch of them uh, in the country. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, concur. <laughs> but this all brings us on to the subject while we're gathered around this table t t today in the sight of whoever it may be. Um, because last week we had quite an interesting conversation on this program about capitalism. and I, I, I'm only, I wish our advocate of capitalism was here today because I think we could continue that conversation. But you know, one of the biggest myths that I, I, I've heard in Finland uh, for the past two decades is the fact that certain political parties say, we defend small businesses. Now we have a small businessman here. Uh, Yala, you, have the, you, have the, you, you, you fight against the bureaucracy no, every day. Yeah. And, and yet, I, uh, every, every time I, I look at the television or watch the, 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 the 
talousuudissa, the, 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 the news about the economy. I, I, see, I hear and see how the big political parties are in the pockets, not of the small businesses, but of big businesses, of the, of the, of the huge corporations. And yet, the Association of Small Businesses in Finland still thinks that certain right-wing parties are gunning for them. Yes, they are. They want to kill you. Yeah, but you can see it's very obvious. You can see that uh, during the past 20 years, all these small kiosks around the corner of the towns and cities they are disappearing. Yes. And all the other uh, small, the, the only thing which was growing, I think, as a small business is um, uh, haircut and hairdressing. <laughs> there is nothing, else. and candy also that is growing too. But the, all the other small businesses are just disappearing. And the uh, the cause of that is uh, tax, 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 tax. And I've been talking that these big tax on a small businesses. So with two or one worker or three uh, employee, once you go concourse because of tax or insurance Bankrupt. as well. Bankrupt. Yeah. And uh, then you see that home, and you go to social or Kela and uh, your workers are going there also. Yes. So isn't it better to support these small businesses? They are um, willing to pay some, even if it's small, then some tax, not to receive uh, jobless money. But yeah. who lobbies right. on behalf of small businesses? I, I'm a great believer in uh, in small businesses, but I, I wanted to send up a, a set up a business myself at one stage, but I just couldn't get my head around all the tax regulations. Uh, and, and all the other paraphernalia that was needed to employ myself, mm -hmm. which I could have done from my own back room. Mm -hmm. No, no, it just seems... And yet, I can go and work for a big company if I'm a good boy, if I've got a nice blue shirt on and I've got a degree from the Turku, Turku mm -hmm. School of Economics and... and, and, and Okay, I'll calm down for a sec, please. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know I get carried away on this subject, but it annoys me intensely. Um, and yet... You know, I cannot be a, I cannot be my own boss and, unless I go through all this bureaucracy. And what I can't stand is that I am being sold a lie by those that govern in this country. It's easy to be your own businessman. I want to bring you in on this, Erasmus, because this is where you come in with your project. Okay? Yeah. Which remind us of again, you're, you want to see small businesses be sustainable, and I think by sustainable means that they last. But be, yeah. before you go there to Rasmus, there is just one point here, that all these small businesses are disappeared. So yeah. most of people are hired, the, the, the ones that they are working, they are hired by big companies. And as what? As a um, cashier, as, as a very simple low uh, paid job. And when they get retired, actually they are not middle class anymore. They are most poor. They're most poor. Yeah. Yeah. Or they're forced to work for a franchise company yeah. that sets them up and tells them how to make food according to uh, the doctrine and the menus of a different culture. But I'm, I'm, I'm feeling every time feeling very bad when I see these retired people with the low paid retired money. They cannot cover their health and they, they cannot cover their rent. They cannot cover. They, they are really suffering. Yeah. You're very kind. <laughs> no, that, that, that is true. That is true. I, I can see their pain. Yeah, yeah. And they don't often. They are in very living individual, uh, uh, single at home. Mm. They can They can They don't have anybody to share their problem yeah. with. Do I, do I get my pills this week or don't I? Can I eat this week and so on? Uh, yeah, you, you, you see this, this all, all around you. Uh, I'm very, and this makes me so scared about what's happening in the world today, that do the upper echelons of the Illuminati that rule us, uh, what, have they got in, what have they got in store for us when they get down into their bunkers? Uh, but I, I don't want to go down that road. I want to bring in Erasmus <laughs> and because you have something positive to say. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, all these uh, project ideas and, and stems a bit from this uh, looming dark things that, that everyone can feel. And that, uh, for example, when you think about this, this way that uh, the economy is driven and, and by pushing down uh, small companies and, and uh, making it harder for, for people to have their own startups and everything, uh, it's a sign, basically, that they're they're kind of um, driving out the the small business owners in for the benefit 
of a big company and this is not a very sustainable plan. It's, uh, it's basically grabbing the money and running away. And, yeah. and there's a lot of examples of, of, of this that once you start thinking about it, uh, if you think about tax evasion for example, which has been made quite easy if you have enough money is somehow all the money somehow accumulates uh, to some offshore account slowly and it's that's i think that's uh, away from all of these mm -hmm. uh, pensioners that that's got right. a really bad job when they got bought out a few years ago yeah that you were talking about just now and and then you know one that the and then of course the fascism that's involved in all that I think is is worth noting as well that uh, if you go to if you go to the bank and you say look I've got I've just got two hundred euros here I'd like to put it into my account where did you get it from how did you get this money and yet we all know that money laundering is done by by huge massive corporations who transfer their cash through and through London or Mexico not a or single so on. one go to the jail when <laughs> it's revealed <laughs> but now in the small businesses. That if something goes wrong, then you have to bring a lot of papers and to prove now nothing is wrong. But there, millions of look at them. It came to the news, and not, none of them went to the in England, in Germany. No, none of them, not a single one, went to the jail. I wonder where the tipping point is. How much do you have to own so you can sort of clear your back and and make more profit, or or where in at what point do you go to jail? When are you so? so uh, poor that you have to go to jail for making this economy well, well let, give me, let me give you an example <laughs> i mean uh, the 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 footballer messi was yeah. uh, was uh, recently convicted by a spanish court as we all know of uh, of tax evasion and was sentenced i think for 18 months or two and a half years in jail but got but off, suspended but by got we got a suspended sentence because he agreed to pay about 10 a few ten thousands mm -hmm. uh, uh, of euros uh, in, in in back tax of course, now it's the turn of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo to face the courts, and uh, because he's also accused uh, of uh, tax evasion, one wonders uh, of what would be his fate. No doubt, some community service or or a big uh, uh, hefty fine. I think there are several moral questions that that have to be asked here. But I'd still like to come back to you, Erasmus, because you still are the voice of hope. Uh, you want businesses to be sustainable. Give us an example of how we can do that. Well, basically, the idea of uh, social entrepreneurship uh, is that instead of creating uh, value just or just having value in money and, and uh, trying to create profit for the owners of the company, uh, you can uh, base the company on some other values like uh, making the society a better place or the local community where you live uh, for example by providing jobs for people who have difficulties to get employed or uh, you can have a product that's uh, affordable uh, for everyone and uh, uh, then there is uh, you can uh, make uh, sustainable products that are environmentally friendly you mean you we sell the services or still there is no money involved? Uh, yeah, there is money. The, I, the, at this point, uh, the, the social entrepreneurship idea is still run like a normal company and, and has all these uh, legislative, uh, uh, what could you call it? So they have to work as a normal company. Mm -hmm. um, and pay the taxes and everything they don't get yeah. any benefit but uh, uh, it's a way to sort of maybe make people think that there is other things with value than just money and uh, you can create a more sustainable uh, business that way uh, not only that it's sustainable uh, because of it helps the society uh, keep uh, on its feet or it helps the environment uh, to to be exist <laughs> yeah, yeah, too, uh, yeah. in a way and uh, but it also means that the business should run itself uh, so you will have to have some small profit to keep the business running but then if you make the 
uh, if you have a lot of profit that instead of uh, paying dividends to the shareholders uh, you have to either start uh, some project uh, for uh, social responsibility uh, you can uh, start uh, you can for example fund some school or something or uh, some project with uh, like some community but give us do, 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 yeah, yeah I think uh, can you give us some examples yeah. of where this has happened because uh, I mean this is beautiful theory mm. um, I, I just wonder uh, where it's been put into practice mm -hmm. in the Western world yeah there are quite a few examples but uh, for from a lo local point of view I think Ecotori is a quite good example mm. because they are helping people with difficulties getting employed they get uh, employed there and then they educate people about this recycling. Uh, uh, they have uh, uh, what is it called? A showcase. Yes. About uh, how the environment is affected if you dump your electronics in the woods, for example. <laughs> and uh, then uh, people can bring their used uh, furniture and and things there uh, to be sold to someone else. Uh, instead of uh, them buying new stuff that consumes the environment so the, the, i think it's all very good but you know where we are we have been trained to accept consumerism mm -hmm. uh to give you a case in point uh our wonderful old washing machine broke down a few weeks ago and um i went on the net and uh, and and, and investigated and discovered that the fault that it had was with the lock now you would think that the lock on the on the, on the door of this uh, of the uh, of this washing machine could be easily fixed so i called a local supplier or repair and they said yes well we know about this yeah yeah it, it'll cost you 145 euros to repair the lock on your washing machine well the, the old washing machine was nine years old it's st was still keeping our clothes clean but uh, in the end you are forced to buy a new one because you realize well it's nine years old it's going it, it, it it's broken down one what next the, the and the mentality is what's going to go wrong with it next so you end up by buying another washing machine which luckily only cost 250 euros but that's 250 euros i could have spent uh, on something else and of course this happens all the time yeah. you have uh, and then so many of these machines that are made today they have um, they, they have built-in planned obsolescence mm -hmm. um, which I think we all know what that is um, I think we've had examples in the media of uh, copying machines that only work for a, a certain number of copies and then deliberately break down so you have to go and buy another one and you think of the carbon footprint that all this incur uh, uh, incurs and, and the waste but of course, it keeps people working. It keeps the factories turning. And you wonder, how are we ever going to get out of this horrid rat race? Um, I think this is a, it's an interesting point that you make. And, and uh, this is a, a really good uh, way for a huge company to make profit. Uh, and I, I feel I have a lot of examples like uh, because when I work in an office uh, there every time uh, we get uh, there's a printer yeah and then the cartridge uh, gets uh, there's like an ink, excess ink cartridge and it gets full and then uh, you can take it to a place and then they fix it for 120 euros something yeah. or you buy a new printer for 70 euros <laughs> and and that's a huge problem i think and uh, this is something that i don't think we can resolve by forcing a company i think we need to educate people uh, and and try to in that sense make them make their consumer choices or or then they can uh, try to think about different models to work uh, <laughs> Around this. this is this is interesting to to educate people mm. how uh, your uh, organization uh, does this part of the job educate people. Yeah, uh, the project I'm working in it's uh, called Seeds, yeah. and uh, we are now uh, using these uh, non-formal education methods in this. It's an international project with partners from Latin America and from Europe, and. Uh, 
we're working with this social economy topic and the way we try to learn about it at first uh, we meet together and then uh, the non-formal education means that there is no one telling you learn this or read this book or like this we we have a workshop and then uh, we learn from each other and uh, try to think about different ways how to get over these problems i mean that how you can you get unemployed people jobless people involved with with your project to to educate them mm. that uh, there are these possibilities and uh, we, there, there are support for in this project in specific uh, we have uh, we are trying to get youth involved before they are uh, uh, graduated from their schools or universities so uh, when they get to the point that they have to think about how are they going to make a living they will have this knowledge about uh, social uh, entrepreneurship and they know that if you start a company you can make it on the basis of a social entrepreneurship uh, and uh, you can uh, it's uh, like an alternative way of doing business to this traditional capitalistic but, model but, but all the time what you say mm. you said that you gave an example equatory but still equatory is so uh, very uh, rare kind of business when you talk about social entrepreneurship, mm. entrepreneurship so it's like an idea it's not real to me you know when when you get yeah. the unemployed people or youth involved how you educate them that okay these are actual work you can start yeah there is a there are more examples on a, a web page uh, called Suomalaisen Tuen Liitto. Uh, it's, I think it's Suomalainen Tuo.fi. And there you can find a list of all the social entrepreneurships in Finland. But it hasn't taken so much uh, speed yet because there isn't really a benefit from doing that. You get a sticker and, <laughs> and a certificate and, and then you get a good feeling that you're doing something but good. But a start is always... Yeah. A start yeah. is always a start, and the more this sort of uh, uh, idea can, um, we're okay, we're okay for time. Um, this is what happens in this modern day age. That somebody's phone goes off in the background, and everything gets confused. No, do carry on. Mm. Uh, I, I think a start is a start, and uh, it, it's a, yeah. it, it's a good way to go, and to make people understand that there is an alternative to this madness that we've been pushed into. Mm. And the thing at this point, we can't uh, say uh, to a person that doesn't have a job, like, just do this and do that. I think we have to change the way people are thinking about business and corporations. And, and uh, uh, I mean, if we, need, if we are going to make a change, uh, that's the way we have to go. Uh, because... Uh, as we talked before, the whole system is built to exploit people that are lower in the society. So that, that's what I meant when I mentioned uh, education as you could do workshop to, to mm. get more people practically involved yeah. with, with a different way of thinking about the job. Mm. Uh, when we look at the society, there are a lot of angles, new angles in the society that it needs to to um, to have a, a new uh, job being created, yeah. and but often people don't see those things. No, it's no. I, I think the the lobbying uh, mechanism of of this uh, capitalistic way of thinking is quite strong, but there are some uh, examples that you find that there are people thinking differently. That you need to start to think sustainably, and and. Uh, to have models that think about not about the next five years and what kind of profits can we make then uh, we need to think about what happens in a hundred years yes and not like a sort of a kind of it's kind of capitalist soviet mentality that we have a five-year plan 
Uh, I, I, see, I see similarities between monopoly capitalism and what was monopoly communism and, uh, in, in, in the Soviet style. And both are to be avoided like the plague. There, there is a third way and it has to be found. And I think that you, Erasmus, are sort of one of the pioneers in this field. The question is how, this, the, how this, these new ideas are communicated to people because you don't get easy access to the media, as you well know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is uh, w what we're trying to do through this project, is to uh, spread, that's what I meant with education at this point, is uh, spreading the, just uh, the knowledge that there is something called social economy, and maybe try to explain the idea a bit and inspire people to uh, learn more themselves about it. and. Uh, we are, uh, firstly, we are educating uh, these youngsters that are taking part in a youth exchange in Italy in October. And uh, then uh, that's uh, people from Finland and Turkey and uh, Italy and Spain. And uh, then they are working in this workshop methods uh, with the topic of social economy, and uh, I can, uh, yeah, so uh, then the idea is that when they return home, then we create some event that we yeah. can uh, spread uh, in our local communities the idea more. Well, you, you've been j mentioning all the time youth, how about elder people, senior people who they are willing to work, they don't want to yeah. see at home after retirement and they don't want to uh, lose the touch with younger people. Mm. Uh, how about them? Yeah, of course, uh, I think they're also important and, and they need to be involved in this as well. Yeah. This pro project is specifically for youth, that's why I concentrate on that. But I think everyone that is at, at least a little bit interested should, should get involved in this. That's about all the time we have for folks. Thanks very much to uh, Jelen here at uh, the um, Kasviskeidas restaurant in the center of Turku. Also, thank you very much to, to Rasmus. This has been yours truly, David Morby, here with uh, Conversation Oasis. And I do hope that this has given everyone something to think about and that you'll join us again next week at these same times. Bye for now.